Concealed carriers of Reddit. When was the time you actually pulled your gun on someone, and how was the situation handled? Throw away in not too much detail, because I have a family I care about. I was home, and heard a noise outside. So I took my handgun and phone to investigate. I checked I had a round ready as I walked downstairs. When I got outside I heard a struggle coming from my neighbor's house, and then the lady screamed for help, and was cut off mid-scream. I started dialing 911 as I started around the bushes to get to their drive. But all I could say was police when they asked me what service was needed since I had rounded the bushes and could see my neighbor punching his wife in the face while he was choking her. I told him to let her go and he reacted by smashing the back of her head into the concrete. So I took a step to my right to get a good angle and I shot him twice in the abdomen. He dropped her and fell away from her made a strange sort of sighing noise and went still and that was more or less it the police arrived and took my gun and statements from me and the wife and two other neighbors who had been on the phone to the police and watched the whole situation i wasn't arrested or charged and i was told by one of the cops that the guy had been violent to the wife before and she had told him she wanted a divorce and he decided to kill her over it i got my gun back a few weeks later the lady was pretty grateful, but my girlfriend at the time went very odd towards me and then left me a month later. She told me years later she regretted that, but at the time she was freaked out I had killed someone and wasn't particularly bothered by it. Don't get me wrong. I didn't want to kill him. I just didn't see another solution in the time I had to react. And I have no regrets in the sense I would do it again in the same situation. So that is the only time I have used my gun to defend myself or anyone else. I'm glad that most people get the results they need without hurting people. <laughs> My 87 year grandfather was on vacation in Biloxi, Mississippi. While unpacking the car at the hotel, a group of three guys walked up and asked if he had any good shit they would want. He just calmly reached into his pocket and pulls out his concealed and said just this. The three apologized and fled. Is your grandpa Clint Eastwood? didn't get to actually pull but both of us had our hands on our weapons i was a process server trying to get a hold of a guy to serve him papers in a bad part of town went to his girlfriend's house which pissed him off he showed up with three friends who tried to surround me i talked him into taking the papers but when his friend reached for his i reached for mine once he knew i was packing as well he froze for a second I took that as my time to leave and walked backwards until I could get around the corner of the building and run. Made $12 on that serve. <laughs> my wife and I were woken up by a couple of guys screaming and shouting in the parking lot of the outside our apartment window. I looked out and saw there were two guys fighting and a girl yelling at them to stop. We called 911. Gave them info about what was going on and kept watching as they would fight and then step back and shout at each other for a while. About half an hour goes by and there are no cops. They are still out there shouting and fighting and we hear one guy shout I'm gonna fucking kill you. We call the police again and update slash remind them. Another 15 minutes goes by and the guy who screamed that gets the upper hand enough that he slams the other guy's head into the side of a dumpster and we see him come away with a decent amount of blood all over one side of his face. At this point I tell my wife to call the police and tell them I'm a concealed license holder and I have taken my gun outside to stop somebody from being seriously hurt slash killed. I go outside with my pistol drawn, take cover behind the corner of the stairwell and yell to stop and sit down on opposite curbs in the parking lot and that the police are on their way. The bleeding guy sits down. The other guy yells at him, you didn't tell me you live by a fucking cop, and then gets in the car with the girl, and they drive off. I holster my pistol and go talk to the bleeding guy to make sure he's okay, and he says yeah, did you call the police? I told him yes, and he said thanks, and went in his apartment. The police showed up about 10 minutes later and lectured me about how I should have let them handle it. They didn't even try to interview the guy in my apartment complex. It was all I could do not to get pissed and say I called you three times over 45 minutes and you didn't handle it. Instead I just went inside and started making breakfast because there was no way all the adrenaline was going to let me sleep. 
My wife, girlfriend at the time, was dog slash house sitting for a family friend for a weekend. I stayed the nights with her because it was a big house out in the country with the closest neighbors being about a half mile away and she was scared. We woke up in the morning and left to run some errands. We left through the garage and closed the garage door when we left. We returned to the home to find the front door wide ass open. We had never used the front door. It had been locked the whole time and we exited through the garage door when we left so this felt way off. I assumed the door had been kicked in or that an invader had found a way to unlock it. I immediately draw my pistol, thinking there might be a bad guy still in there, although there are no other cars around. I want to make sure the dog is okay, so I go in. I loudly shouted before entering that we had called the police and that they were on their way. Room by room I cleared the house. No one was there and nothing appeared to be rummaged or missing. And the dog was fine. Honestly no idea how that door was opened. Still bugs me to think about honestly. It was quite spooky in hindsight it was incredibly, ridiculously stupid of me to enter that home. Nothing came of it obviously. But I should absolutely have waited to let law enforcement check it out. Hindsight is 20 over 20 though. At the time I was riding a major adrenaline rush and hoping the dog was okay. I lived in ghetto fuck in Denver. Had my car broken into twice in the last 3 months. Broken window. Car itself attempted to be stolen. I was at my wits end between that. A shitty living situation. And a shitty job. I called the cops on a couple of guys breaking into a car in the driveway. Not mine. They came to mine and picked up a rock to break my windshield another goddamn time and I fucking had enough. Walked out into the yard. One of them pulled a knife and came at me. So I drew my sidearm. Eddie had realized he was bringing a knife to a gunfight and the two took off. Cops caught them two blocks away. For background. I'm a police officer and carry off duty almost 100-37 of the time. One night about midnight I was on my way home from work and needed to stop at an ATM. I parked and walked around the corner and there was a person at the ATM being robbed by a suspect who appeared to have a knife or some kind of sharp object. At that time, I was carrying a Glock 36. 45 ACP. I drew my pistol, identified myself as a police officer, and ordered the suspect to drop his weapon. Instead of dropping it, the suspect turned and lunged towards me. So I shot him to time center mass and he went down. I called 911. Cops showed up in about a minute and rescue got there about 5 minutes later. I hit him once in the sternum and once in the shoulder. Thankfully he survived. The weapon turned out to be a sharpened screwdriver. I've been a police officer for 15 years and it's the only time I have ever drawn my off duty weapon and the only time I have ever shot someone. I'm glad he lived. I didn't want to kill him, but his actions left me with no choice but to fire. I honked at a guy who was driving erratically, speeding, and nearly hit me passing on a double yellow. He slammed on his brakes, ran me onto the shoulder, jumped out of his truck with a hammer in his hand, and ran towards my side of the vehicle. By the time he got there, my gun was pointed directly at his face. He put his hands up, dropped the hammer, got back in his truck and drove off. I've never been so terrified. I'm a woman BTW. I called the police non-emergency line when I got home and reported what happened. Nothing ever came of it, other than me never leaving the house without my gun anymore. I was getting gas around 11pm in a not so great part of town. I was the only person at this gas station and a man that I'd guess was in his 20s came out from the dark side of an adjoining parking lot on the other side of the station. A few things set off my something isn't right sense. The first was that he was wearing a black sweater with the hood up. Despite it being so late it was still well over 100 degrees out. He was doing the felony stretch trying to seem overly casual. And the entire time he approached me, he kept his right hand in the front pocket of the sweater. I gave him the benefit of the doubt thinking he'd pass by. But when he was about 30 feet from me his pace quickened and he made a beeline for my car. I had been sitting sideways on my seat, so that my legs were out of the car, so I drew my firearm from under the dash and presented it between my legs in a way that I knew he would see it, but didn't actually point it in his direction. After I drew he turned on a dime and walked into another dark lot never taking his hand from the pocket. 
I suppose it's possible he was just some guy wanting to ask for change. But given the situation I believe my instincts were right and this guy wasn't up to any good. Close D up the shop for the night. About 11pm. Walked to car and unlocked the door. I noticed a guy walking in my direction and figured he wanted some spare change or cigarette. The area is known for homelessness and felons. Aka. Felony flats. I turn. And the guy is holding a hatchet. He says give me the keys and I won't hurt you. So I set them on the hood of my car and start to back up. As he goes for the keys. I go for my handgun. I cock the slide. He dropped the keys and ran. That's the only time I've ever had to pull out my firearm. Edit. This got bigger than I thought overnight. To clarify. I was carrying illegally and it was 13 years ago. I know having a round in the chamber would have been the smart thing to do, but having my license at the time would have been smarter. I was dumb kid who just wanted to get keep my ass safe. Wasn't thinking about being arrested for having it. And yes, I'm talking about Portland, Oregon. The area is a hotbed of criminal activity. And as someone who grew up in that area, I wasn't going to take any chances. Late to the party but... I was in a gas station at about 2am in a shady part of town. I lived in a one room basement apartment in a hotel that shared a parking lot with a gas station. So I was a regular. I finished buying my drink and the girl at the counter quietly asked me if I could stick around for a while because there was a guy that had been hanging around the parking lot and randomly coming inside every few minutes for the last hour. I quietly told her of course and made small talk until the guy wandered over to a section of the store where I could see him and the attendant at the same time before I whispered just roll with it. Then I loudly said hey Stussy, name made up, have I shown you my new pistol yet? As I said that I pulled it out and kept the muzzle down. The guy quickly left after, after about a half hour or so we were both sure he was not coming back. The fucked up thing was she told me after he left they had been told by management they were not allowed to call the cops unless they had actually been robbed because having cops come by randomly would scare away business. I made sure she and any other night workers had my number after that since I could literally be there in 30 seconds if they needed anything. They only called me a few times in the year or so I lived there after that but it always made them feel better knowing that a friendly face could keep them company if they felt the need. I own a firearm that sits in my nightstand drawer. Don't have my concealed permit. I woke one night to loud noises coming from my living room around 3am. I grabbed the gun and cautiously moved down the hallway. It was my cat. He got into some catnip somehow and was freaking out and knocked a bunch of random stuff over and off shelves. Fuck you, buddy. Was in our local Walmart parking lot with my wife and daughter when we were walking back to our car after shopping and two young men approached us and asked for money. I told them that I didn't have any cash and they said that was okay since we could hand over my wallet and purses as they pulled knives. I carry on my right side by my kidney so it appears I'm reaching for my wallet when I pull out my weapon. They start running and we call 9 double one so that the police can get our statements and video from Wam at parking lot. My wife was always against me carrying when I'm with her, but now she is fine with me carrying where I'm allowed. BTW I live in SoCal. A buddy of mine got jumped in broad daylight by three guys in a grocery store parking lot for his iPhone. He had been attempting to sell it at the eco ATM, and when it didn't offer him as much as he was hoping, an iPhone 8, and it wanted to give him like $180, he gave up. They had been scoping it out, and followed him outside. As he walked past their truck towards me in the car they grabbed a tire iron out of their truck bed, and started attacking him. Me being a few spaces down ran over yelling to back off. Then noticing they had no intention of stopping, and I was outnumbered. I pulled my gun and shouted to stop once more. Two of them looked up and saw me, which made them then immediately back away and run for their truck. It being illegal to shoot someone retreating. I kept a gun up and dialed 911 as I moved towards my buddy. They got away. Got his phone too. But he only ended up with 8 stitches in his forehead and a bruised shoulder blade. Cold been way worse. 3am at a 24 hour Walmart. I was working overnights at the time. 
just picking up some essentials on my night off. I park away from other cars at this Walmart cause it's the worst one in town. When I come out two other cars were parked near me. I see someone lurking not too far away and see them pacing around. As I approach my car on the passenger side to drop my purchases into the back seat. The person beelines it for me. They turn down the path between the two cars near me. I didn't even say anything. I drew, but kept the gun down to my side. They stopped and booked it. I've never been more happy to carry. A friend of mine is a gun collector, and he's only drawn once in a situation much like this. In a pretty empty parking lot. Some sketching looking guy crossing the lot happened to choose an angle that would take him right past my friend, who was keying into his car. My friend half turned towards the guy, who was yards away, lifted his shirt, appendix carry, and half drew his gun, but didn't even have it out of the holster before the guy suddenly decided that a different angle across the lot would work better for him. Edit. Evidently I forgot to mention that this took place at night, where strange people usually have the sense to avoid each other, and that my friend, who owns a business, was carrying a lot of cash as he left said business. He was, in any case, being targeted for a robbery, but apparently I was too euphemistic or charitable towards the other guy's intentions with this talk of just walking through a parking lot. A cop had pulled us over and asked my dad to hand over his gun, which they can do in Ohio, he didn't and the cop gave it back after the stop was over. Well, as most stories on threads like this go, not me but a friend of mine, he has a CCW. He was picking up his GF from college. As they were driving away, her psycho ex shows up and starts following them in his car. The ex started to get road rage and would speed up then back off, get up next to them and drop back. My friend has the girl call 9 double one. They give dispatch all the info and stay on the phone. They keep driving, waiting for police. When the ex speeds past them, then stops his car perpendicular to the road. Blocking my friend. X starts approaching the car with Tyran. Fearing for his safety and the safety of his GF. My friend got out of his car and drew his firearm. He aimed at the X and told him to stop or he walked fire. X continued to approach. So my friend fired. Hitting the X. X ran back to his own car and took off. Police finally arrived and were able to track the X down. X was arrested on multiple crimes. My friend was cleared. Obvious they took his gun as evidence but no repercussions. I pulled my pistol only once. I was working at a bar. I had to shut the event down early that night because of a large fight that broke out. As everyone was pouring out, some idiot pulled a pistol from his waistband and started shooting into the air. I drew my firearm on him and he ran. Nothing else happened. Cops were pretty pissed when they showed up though. Worked at a bar as a bouncer. Many of the guys I worked with carried. But I did not. It was a rough country western bar with a lot of fights. About a year after I quit working there a fight broke out between a guy and his ex-girlfriend's new boyfriend. The group got kicked out and the guy killed his ex and then himself in the ensuing commotion in the parking lot. Yeah. The bad shit always happens in the parking lot. That's why I always park inside the establishment. Thankfully I haven't been in a situation where I needed to. The only time I've drawn mine was when a friend's house was broken into. And in that case the person that did it was already gone. Most of my friends have their permit and carry. But only one has drawn on someone. To make a long story short. It was a gas station. Late at night. Someone lifted their shirt. Showed off the handle of a gun. And reached for it. After telling my friend they wanted money. Friend drew on them and the person ran. No shots fired. Relaying a story from my husband. He was in college. Asleep in his bedroom in his split level townhouse. His roommates were out of town that particular night. Weekend or some sort of break slash holiday. Wakes up to loud banging and the door opening. Then hears odd voices saying unintelligible things and footsteps. Quickly realizes it's not a rumored coming home early. Grabs his weapon and sneaks upstairs. His bedroom was on the lower level. Sees two guys in the kitchen. No lights on. Going through the fridge. He flipped on he lights. Weapon drawn and yelled at them to get on the floor. 
After much yelling on both sides, and probably some pissed pants, he realized that they were his Asian neighbors. They were pissed drunk. And had gotten apartments confused. This was a complex of duplex townhouses that all looked alike. It was easy to do sober. They had left their keys at the bar and kicked the door in and were in the process of trying to figure out where the hell their leftovers were when my now husband scared the piss out of them. All parties calmed down and came to an agreement that no cops would be called slash charges filed as it was a rather honest mistake. In fact, the neighbors came back the next day and fixed the door. So, not a life and death. Almost murdered or saved some owns life situation. Actually kinda funny now in hindsight. Some years ago people realized it was smarter to rob limo drivers who often had $800 or $1.000 on them than taxi drivers with $50. So I'm taking a family to Union Station in Chicago and a black Cadillac seems to be following me as I'm winding my way through downtown Chicago. As I unload the family's luggage, this guy drives past me and into the underground tunnel at the station. It's mid-morning. So there's not much traffic around as I pull into the tunnel this guy has stopped his car, gotten out and is standing in the second lane, so I can't go past, and he is a very big boy, I'm wearing a black suit with a white shirt so, when I pull my beautiful black, 357, and hold it up against my chest it's very clear to see, he holds his hands up gets back in his car and drives off, and I start breathing again, conceal carrying a, 357, you don't play, if you don't see seer, 500 magnum, or a bar it, 50 then don't talk to me smh. I haven't but I helped a friend teach concealed weapons courses, he was NRA certified, I was not, I was there, because he would have large groups, sometime 20 to 30 people, and it was nice to have some extra eyes, plus I learned a lot, anyway, he rode a hay abuser pretty much everywhere. A guy crossed multiple lanes of traffic after merging onto the road and almost rammed into him. He speeds up and gives him the finger. The guy in the truck follows him down many random roads. Finally, not wanting to punch it at 180 miles per hour to get away and definitely not wanted the guy to follow him to his house. He pulls over. The guy gets out of the truck, goes to the bed, and grabs an axe. My friend has his gun in his backpack, and he sticks his hand in there ready to draw. He tells the guy that has armed, and to not come any closer. The guy stops, seems drunk, and yells at him. Finally, a cop pulls up behind the truck and arrests the guy. Tells my friend he can leave and that's it. Edit, I know it's an old comment, but I will amend my story. My friend did not let the man know he was armed. Instead he simply warned the guy not to come any closer and to leave him alone. I think he called the police before pulling over, but I have not confirmed that. I didn't actually draw, but almost had to. My girlfriend and I were staying in Seattle for Valentine's Day. Restaurants were booked pretty solid, since we made our plans last minute. But there was a higher end place open, until about midnight or so as a Valentine's Day special. So we booked a table for 10.30. We were going somewhere nice, so we were both dressed a lot nicer than usual. I'm wearing a blazer and dress shoes. I have my pistol on my right hip. It was about a 15 minute walk to the restaurant from our hotel. The hotel charged something like $20 or so every time you took your car out. So we opted to walk. We also planned on drinking, so it seemed like the smarter option. We eat our food, and by the time we leave it's about 12.15. So we get back near our hotel around 12.30. As we are across walk away from the entrance a rough looking guy approaches my girlfriend who is on my right and starts asking her for money. I step between him and her and he says that he isn't homeless or a beggar. But his car broke down and he needs $60 for a belt or something like that for his engine. I could see him glancing at the crosswalk sign and I knew I didn't want to get stuck on that side of the road. So I told him I'll talk to him as we walk across. While in the intersection I tell him I don't have any cash on me. He tells me that he will pay me back after he gets his car fixed. And I reiterate I don't have any money. He motions to an ATM kiosk and says that I can get out money at the ATM for him. And says again that he will pay me back. 
I notice at this point that he has a pocket knife clip in his front, left pocket and his eyes are darting between my girlfriend and I's faces and my torso. Also he keeps fumbling around with the pocket that the knife is in. I knew for sure there was no way I was going to do that and we were about 100 feet or so from the hotel in trance so I just say sorry man. I can't help you. He says again I'm not homeless or anything I have money to pay you back if you go to the ATM. I ignore that and we start to walk away from him. As I do that he grabs onto the pocket clip a little more firmly. At that point I lifted up my dress shirt which revealed to him that I had my pistol on me and he walked away pretty quickly without saying anything. My heart was pounding hard and I was so mad. I was thinking I can't believe this guy's going to put me in this fucking position. I don't want to shoot anyone. Especially not over $60. But fuck. Scariest moment of my life and I'm glad it went down the way it did. I didn't see anyone say this here. But if you're ever in a position to draw and actually shoot someone, never talk to the police without a lawyer. Even if you were justified and you're 100% sure you did the right thing. I saw this video on YouTube a long time ago with a former detective who was now a lawyer. It was eye-opening. He was talking about how cops are trained to ask you questions that could incriminate you if you're not careful. Never, ever talk to the cops without representation. And you have better been in fear for your life.